Hi everyone, I'm Steve Singer, Senior Vice President of Publisher and Developer Relations at Nintendo of America. And I'm Mariko Kimoto, Director of Partner Management at Nintendo of America. On behalf of Nintendo and our friends at Riot Games, it's our pleasure to introduce this presentation from Riot Forge. As many of you know, the League of Legends universe is both vast and varied, with so many stories to tell. Today, we're delighted to share a closer look at several of those stories, which will be coming soon to the Nintendo Switch system, including Hextech Mayhem, a League of Legends story, which launches later today. And, of course, there will be world-first reveals to enjoy here, too. We're excited for players to venture into the world of Runeterra on their Nintendo Switch systems, and this is just the beginning. Indie developers from around the world are collaborating with Riot Forge to bring a wealth of innovative experiences to life. We can't wait to share the visions of these talented creators with all of you. So let's get to it. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate the kind words. And hi, everyone. Welcome to our show. My name's Leanne. I'm the head of Riot Forge. And I'm Rowan. I'm the creative director of Riot Forge. Riot Forge is Riot Games' third-party publishing division. We've been working on Riot Forge for a few years now, and we get to work with some awesome partners from all around the world. And these partners are really focused on building completable League of Legends games. It's all about stories. We want to tell really great stories in these games. And that's why we're super excited to be partnering with Nintendo. The Switch is the perfect platform for these games. We've created this deep universe for 11 or so years. Yeah. There's over 150 epic champions in League of Legends. Riot Forge games are going to let you get up close and personal with our champions like never before. League of Legends has never had storytelling in games like this before. Until now. Yeah, and our developers are working on some awesome stories with some of our favorite champions. So we're extremely excited to share that with you today. Um, and I think we should get the show started. Let's do it. Let's do it, let's yeah. go. try to create games that try to answer two questions. Where is the beautiful and where is the crazy? The wall of Runeterra is populated by hundreds of mighty heroes. But as a creator, I was always more interested in the wrinkles. And the wrinkles are those little tiny details that define our humanity. And there is this tiny little child, Nunu. And Nunu, in this wall of war, is just looking for his mother. And that was the kind of story you want to tell. Song of Nunu is a single player narrative adventure. And as a Nunu, you are looking for your mother. It's a road trip you are doing with your best friend. Wulump is like the biggest teddy bear you have ever seen. It's like a father or a protector to Nunu. And with Wulump, you move through the Freljord, this frozen land. The Freljord is an inhospitable and forgiving wasteland. But in this land, if you look here, you have the Notai. The Notai don't believe in war. They believe in stories. As the Notai say, you cannot kill a story and you cannot kill a song. Nunu is a Notai boy and he has a magical flute. He can make different elements in the environment react to its notes and to its sound, solving the different challenges we encounter in the game. If you play the flute and it's a melody he likes, uh, he will dance with you. But if you start making bad noises, he closes his ear and complaining like, stop that. And if you don't stop, then he throws a snowball at you. We put so much care into the relationship between Nunu and Willum. They play together, they love together, they cry together, they take care of each other. The Freljor is a magical environment, and this game is all about adventure. Players are going to be able to explore new and exciting places they have never seen before. 
you will jump, you will climb, you will ride jetties. And the good thing about kids riding a jetty is that no matter how hard the environment, everything feels like a roller coaster. What do you do? Ah! This is a story about the friendship between two very different beings and how they grow to love each other. This is again about friendship, pure, innocent joy, hope, and family. Thanks, Willem. I couldn't do it without you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Rhythm game induces a flow state, a state of heightened mental flexibility that allows the subject to master the tempo! <laughs> Boring! Nobody's gonna play our game if you make it sound like homework! When Riot Forge approached us, they said, what champions would you be interested in? Immediately, Zig stood out as this unhinged, wacky, little puffball of mayhem. And Heimerdinger is sort of this archetype of the, the old, you can't do that kind of character. What? And you put someone that doesn't care about essentially anything will blow everything up with someone that says you can't do that. And I will let you build this ball. And it's just magic. Good to be back! In Hextech Mayhem, you play as Ziggs, and the idea is that you are causing as much mayhem as possible. Go forth, my beautiful bomb! Go forth and explode to your heart's content! <laughs> Hextech Mayhem was inspired by basically a mashup of the auto rhythm runners that we've had in the past and like a guitar hero or a rock band gameplay mashed together. I wouldn't want to say that Hextech Mayhem is a rhythm game. It is a music game. What that means is all of your inputs are explicitly tied to the music. That includes the rhythm, that includes the melody, that includes the bridges, the verses, and all of that. So you are playing along explicitly to the music. The music really drives the gameplay. So when I'm playing, I just get a smile on my face, and it's like, this music is just so happy and fun, and I'm bouncing around to it. But there are multiple levels of gameplay in this game that we've never done in the past. There's what we call the freestyle mayhem system. So there's all the prompts, and if you play them, you do it right. But then there's also hidden prompts that are not visible. They're all musical. So if you are listening to the music and you're attuned to it, you can cause tons of extra mayhem for extra bonus points and ranks, and you know, and that's the only way that you can achieve a challenger rank. Now can we stop this buffoonery already? <laughs> but there's so much room for improvement, I'm doing it. I'm only getting started. Our flavor comes out through a lot of the frantic nature of the gameplay, the animations and the artistic representation of these champions that we hope is going to look fresh to League players, but also familiar. Hextech Mayhem really is for both the casual player who just wants to play a single player League of Legends story, but also the mastery player who wants to dominate whatever game they play. I am unstoppable! This is preposterous, Ziggs! I know! Isn't it the best?
we've been pretty radio silent for at least a year or two. You may remember us from the Game Awards where we showed a little teaser. And let me tell you, the game has evolved considerably since that day. Oh, look! It's our favorite sniveling Blither. We've been waiting ages to beat you up. Oh, yeah? Well, no time like the present. Convergence is a story about Echo and Zahn, this polluted city in Runeterra. Echo uncovers this plot by a group of chem barons, the organized crime of Zahn. It's a time travel story where he needs to save his city. A few years back, we got a phone call from Riot Forge. My partner called me up and said, hey, uh, Riot wants to make a game with us. And um, my second child was just born. He called me, I was literally at the hospital, and I thought he was just messing with me. So I was like, I think it's a prank caller, Dan. I don't think this is, this is real. It turns out it was, and uh, we, were, we were pretty happy about that. Double selling games typically have uh, a lot of combat and have a beautiful 2D art style and Speed Brawl is our latest game. Riot essentially told us, we have a bunch of champions, which one do you want to work with? And we settled on Echo, we settled on Zahn. Speed Brawl is a lot about focusing on the combat, but in Convergence, you're exploring, you're discovering. We focus way more on the action platforming part of it. Yeah. We go deep into who Echo is, developing his character and his story. Convergence is set in Zon, but it's Zon through Echo's eyes. Echo is a teenage inventor, and he has created this incredible device called the Zero Drive, which allows him to rewind time. One major challenge was to make rewind feel more than just an undo button. It's about if you have information for the future, how can you make that useful so you can actually mess up, go back in time, change your tech, and then go back and outsmart your enemy. There's definitely been a few games that have played with time control, but what's unique about Convergence is that you can control every moment. You essentially have a character that doesn't make mistakes. Anytime he does something that he wants to fix, he just has to rewind it. Convergence was built to allow you to control time, to really strategize, because that's what being Echo is all about. My name's Echo. Oh yeah, I can rewind time. Remember, from here on out, it's Captain Fortune. The goddess granted me a vision. The black mist enveloping the world. If the black mist has returned, I will drive it back. I'm not losing my city to the delusions of some second-rate king. Welcome to the wild, no hero. The dark Swallow everything. With our combined might, no challenge is too great. I won't abandon my duty. Not again. It's time for the truth to come to light! For what you seek, he stirs the mist. Maybe we are doomed. When the giants call and ask you what you want. Goddess forsaken us. Come on, we've taken some hits, but we're not done yet. Move yourself and rise, rise. Pull under. There is only one queen. My.
I'm Joe Matarera. I'm the CEO and creative director at Airship. Ruin King is an RPG with turn-based combat. Knock him down! And you play a group of champions that are from all parts of the world. They converge in Bilgewater, which is this town of like traitors and rogues and thieves. Some live there, some are just transient and visiting for who knows what purposes. Hear that? Something just moved out there. The player's goal is to stop whatever oncoming threat is happening. And it's the rebirth of the Ruined King. It's a story largely about misfortune in Illawi. And these are characters with a kind of a strained history. You know, they're sometimes friends, sometimes foes. They're having to work together. Illawi. It's been a while. I was starting to think you were avoiding me. You throw in a guy like Brahm, who's just bringing positivity to, like, every scene. This will be fun, yes? Yasuo and Ari, who, you know, they're kind of dealing with, like, ghosts of their past, and they're, they're kind of bonding over that. Ari? But they have a lot of secrets. I need to control myself. And then you have Pike, who's just crazy. We wanted to make sure each combat was challenging. We don't really want you to just like mindlessly hit one attack and then, oh, now it's a boss and use strategy. So lots of the creatures have unique mechanics. We added a lane system where you can actually modify the speed of your abilities and it'll also modify the powers. And that will let you do things like, I need to heal before my character dies and I see the enemies doing an attack. I can perform an ability in the speed lane and get the heal off in time. Or I got a bunch of buffs built up on Yasuo and I'm gonna do his like big attack in the power lane. It's gonna be slower, but it's gonna multiply all of those buffs even more. It just adds a sort of a third dimension to the combat that no other game I've seen has. Combat is separate from the exploration aspect. This division of combat and exploration allows us to really put forward the artistry of the team by highlighting the design of the characters, the animation, the visual effects. We've basically taken what's worked in our previous couple games and refined it. I think we've taken bow chasers and cranked it up a notch. So I think this game is, is uniquely airship because of that marriage between really fun, like kind of grounded in tradition role-playing mechanics, but brought into the modern era with this great visual wrapper. Because of my background in comics, I approach everything as sort of like, what is the comic book version of this character or this scene? This can't be happening. Everyone from role-playing fans to people who are adjacent are gonna get something out of this game. It's not just for League of Legends players. It's a story that anyone can jump into and understand you know, digesting the beauty of the world to, you know, really grinding your gears and trying to figure out the strategies and tactics to get through hard and difficult battles to League fans who have always wanted to take a step away from the competitive game what the? and just live in the world.